This is the ExtraTime.com Monday podcast. I'm Oisín Langan. Hope you're keeping safe and well. Don't worry, this is an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer free zone. What more can you say about the situation? I mean, the conversation that United and even non-United fans are having today is who will replace Ole? And that's a discussion they were having last week and the week before and the week before that and the week before that. The club have actually been very unfair to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They should have really cut him loose a while ago and they should certainly not have made him do that really cringy video I actually felt sorry for the guy there's no doubt he loves the club and the fans love him and I get that because as a manager he tried hard it just didn't work out for him and as a player he was a legend it doesn't reflect badly on him what he's done as a manager that his legacy as a player in the same way that Steve Staunton is still an Irish legend despite the fact that the management thing uh, didn't go particularly well but to make him do that video that was just that was just horrible and it's yet another misstep from those who control Manchester United and this whole situation is their fault. It's not the fault of Annie Gottlieb Solskjaer. The other interesting thing is that Michael Carrick, who is part of a management team that did not work and wasn't working, is now the interim coach. So I wonder, does he have a chance of getting this long term or are they just putting him in as a stopgap and then whoever comes in will be allowed to bring in all their own people? Because I imagine any manager worth their salt, any manager who manages Manchester United and therefore would be in that kind of huge name category, they... They're the kind of person I imagine w- who would want to bring in their own staff. Anyway, I promised this was an Oli free zone, so I better move on. Congratulations to Wexford Youths, who won the Evoke.ie FAI Cup final yesterday, beating Shelburne three goals to one. We'll be hearing from Keeve Gray, the goalkeeper, in just a few moments. Ella Malloy, player of the match, she was brilliant. Unfortunately, she got injured, and it means she can't take her place in the Republic of Ireland squad for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers against Slovakia and Georgia. Shelburne defender Jesse Stapleton, Celtics Isabel Atkinson, and Birmingham City forward Emily Whelan are all in the squad, but Glasgow City's Clara Walsh and um, Ella Malloy, along with Liverpool's Leanne Kernan, are all out. You can find out more about that on Extra Time. Dot com. Also coming up, we've got Mark Bircham of Waterford and Andy Myler of UCD ahead of their clash in the SSC Electricity League promotion relegation final. This Friday night, it's on in Richmond Park. It is live on LOI TV and I have to say I'm really looking forward to being part of the broadcast for that one. We've also got Colin Whelan who scored his 21st league goal of the season over the weekend for UCD in a really impressive display. The Thomastown man has ripped it up this season and no doubt he has an awful lot of eyes on him from an awful lot of clubs both in Ireland and beyond, I imagine. There's also Tom O'Connor of ExtraTime.com's roundup of how the Irish did in the UK this weekend and beyond that. We've also got my GA club roundup. Um, As you're aware, I'm a little bit obsessed with the club championship and uh, we will get into that. Rory Higgins is someone you'll hear from on the show today as well. The Derry City manager along with the Derry fans, is playing a bit of a waiting game to see if they'll be in Europe. If St. Pat's beat both in the Cup, Derry are in Europe. So Derry fans are St. Pat's fans for the week. Even if they don't win the Cup, and even if they don't get into Europe, they still have a very strong squad for next season. Will Patching has been confirmed today. Jamie McGonigal has already gone there from Crusaders. He's been excellent. Obviously, they've signed McElhenney and Duffy. And speaking of Crusaders, McGonigal's former club, I watched them play Glen Torrin at Seaview in Belfast on Saturday for BBC Sport NI. The highlights are on tonight on BBC Two, I think. And uh, Aaron McCary was back in goal for Glen Torren. Afterwards, him and Bobby Burns, who he had that tangle with a couple of weeks ago, walked off the pitch together arm in arm. It was good to see Glen Torren winning the game one little by the way. Plum with a fantastic free kick. A sea view, by the way, at, at, at a great venue. And over the next couple of weeks and months, if you want a fix of live football and that kind of atmosphere, I would suggest... Somewhere like Seaview or the Oval or Windsor Park or uh, even Milltown, get yourself up to Warren Point, which is not that far from Dundalk. Uh, these are all great venues and the, the the football in the Irish League has improved massively over the last while. So it's certainly worth a, a look and you'll certainly get your fix if you're missing live football when the League of Ireland wraps up, which happens this weekend. Two big games, a promotion relegation playoff final on Friday, which is essentially a cup final and also uh, the cup final which is on Sunday between St. Pat's and Bowes. We'll have a big preview on Friday ahead of that game. Right, let's talk to our first guest of the ExtraTime.com Monday podcast. Wexford goalkeeper Keeve Gray, yet again an FAI Cup champion. Uh, Keeve, thanks for joining us. Thanks a million, Oshin. Thanks very much for having me. Um, You're in great form as I look at you now. You've got a big (laughs) smile on you and you've also got a cup medal on you. Will this medal ever be taken off? 
Never. You sleep with it. We had the trophy here now. I sleep with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your third time to win this medal. But is it is it fair to say that this is the one that means the most so far? I think um, I think they all mean just as much. But this one was a little bit sweeter because last season we were fairly disappointed that we got no silverware. Was wasn't good enough from our point. And this season we we wanted to come back and. We really, with the hunger, the desire from everyone was just unbelievable this year. It was just unbelievable. So uh, you could see like the work rate, the want, the want to win, like, you know, the want to work for each other was just absolutely unbelievable. We would have died. And you see like people put in tackles, Lolly Conlon, Lynn Craven, like Adele Kennedy, Adele Doherty. Do you know what I mean? All Kylie Murphy, everywhere across the board, all them people put in tackles, last ditch tackles, tackles to just throw their body on the line because we wanted that. We wanted that more than anyone this year. And that's what we got. And is that something you would have spoken about in the lead into it throughout the week? Or was it just an unsaid thing and people silently went about their work with everyone knowing, we know how much we want this, let's go and show it? No, we, we knew our, our good captain would kindly remind us as well, like, you know, we want this more than anyone. And, but everyone everyone knew their jobs and they knew what had to be done. And like, it wasn't, and our manager, Stephen, he said that, like, it wasn't just starting eleven. And as you've seen, it was the subs that were brought. It was a team. Like, it wasn't, a, you know, it was a squad performance. Um, and everyone, whether you were starting or you were coming in, everyone knew the role and everyone knew that no matter what we were winning and that was it, you throw your body on the line, regardless, we'll get that win. We'd fight for each other till the very, very end. And that's why Wexford Jutes. And to start the game, to be standing between those sticks at the start, was that in some ways a bit of a victory for you before it even started? Because you were batting against in- injury in the lead-in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, there was never any doubt I was never going to okay. miss that game. So, <laughs> I, I, to be honest with you, if I had no legs, I'd still play. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I was, I was never going to miss that game. But was it a worry for you going into it that, you know, even if I make it here, even if I start here, well, sorry, I should rephrase that because you were never going to not start. <laughs> but was it a worry for you that you were carrying an injury into it or was that something that kind of took away from your preparation? And then maybe as soon as you get into the game, you realise, OK, I'm fine. It's OK. No, no. Um, to be honest with you, I'm kind of the person, yeah, you carry a bit of a knock or whatever, like, but you put all that at the back of your mind because, like, pain is only temporary, but success is forever, like, you know? So, like, no matter what you go through, it's only temporary, like, because you know you put all that to the back of your head because you know you have a job to do. When you get the job done, you deal with it after. That's the way, I, that's the way we are. Like, it's just the way it is. Oshin, to be honest with you. And the performance that you came up with, I mean, that must be very pleasing. It's it's pleasing to win a cup no matter how you do it, but to actually perform the way you did, that must be extra pleasing. Absolutely unbelievable. But we, in the first half, we weren't good enough, you know. And we spoke about that. We came in at halftime and we'd always sit down as a team under like our dressing room. Like it's, it, we always talk and we, we, we'd say, okay, what's going on here? What, you know what I mean? And that's exactly what was said. That first half for us was not good enough. That's not good enough. And when we come out, and we did in the second half and we showed like, you know, we start getting our passes together and we scored like, you know, um, and that's what it was. We just had to step it up, step it up because there's so much more in us. And we knew that we just had to show it and perform. So it was just amazing. Is this cup win even sweeter because you beat P-Mount and Shelburne on the way to it? <laughs> or does that Look, answer the question? That. You could say, yeah, I don't know. You could say that all right, but like, Everyone would always regard Wexford Jutes as the underdogs or whatever, but we know what we're about. And we don't care if it's being under shell, but you just put whoever it is in front of us and it's just the next game for us. So Yeah. But but you have done it the hard way because you, you had to go to yeah. Piemont in the semi final. And then obviously yeah. Shelburne are coming in as champions. But <laughs> you, you 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 beat the two of them. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. But like that's the caliber of players you have in your squad, you know? You know, them, them young girls coming through are unbelievable. So, yeah, we might have done it the hard way, but as you say, it makes it all the sweeter, doesn't it? And does this does this win mean an awful lot? Because, as you said a couple of minutes ago, last year you didn't win anything. You were disappointed with that because you grade yourselves by trophies, and that's absolutely right given the club's record. Whereas this year, okay, the title challenge faltered in the last couple of weeks, but on the final day of the season, you were there 
And while a huge audience was watching, and I appreciate that the, the end of the league had a big TV audience on TG Carr, but this had a big audience as well on, on TV. And, you know, it just generally got a lot of coverage. On a really big day, you were there with the trophy. That's what you, like, That this is what the dreams are made of, you know, that kind of way, like, to perform. And it's my opinion, and I've said this before, it's it's on the pinnacle, like, this is the pinnacle of, of League of Ireland. Like, you know, this is the big day, this is the day you want to perform, this is the day that you want to be in. So this is, to be up on that stage, lifting that trophy with that bunch of girls is just amazing. You just, you couldn't write words for that. Well, Kiva, I think we'll let you back to the celebrations. In fairness, thanks very much. The pubs reception... open out early, I think so. <laughs> Don't go to the pubs, kids. Uh, the, re- <laughs> the, re- the reception on Cloud Nine is actually excellent. I, I, I the, the Wi-Fi yeah. on Cloud Nine is brilliant. So, well, look, Wi-Fi excellent. on Cloud Nine, top of the world, is unbelievable. Up there, you know? A brilliant stuff, and you, and you don't have to pan the camera around for those who are listening to this interview. I can see you. You can't see me. But is there other teammates around you there? No, no, no. No, you're on your own. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you to give yourselves a cheer, but I won't. So if there's no one else around, okay. Oh, wait, we're too modest for that anyway. I'm doing that. Says the woman wearing her medal for the interview. Keith Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Gray. Thanks for joining us on the Extra Time.com Monday podcast. Enjoy the celebrations. Thanks a million, Ocean. Thanks very much. Keith Gray in absolutely flying form. And why wouldn't she be Wexford Youth champions once again in the Evoke.ie FAI Cup? Right. Let's go from the southeast. Up to the top, the northwest. Although the interview was done in the northeast, Rory Higgins, the dairy manager, is playing a waiting game along with the squad and fans to find out whether they'll be in Europe next season. That will happen if St Pat's overcome Bowes in the cup final. So I guess if you're a dairy fan, you're also a Pat's fan over the next couple of weeks. They had a good win on Friday night against Dundalk, two one. The final score in Oriel Park, their first win at Oriel Park in eight years. After the game, their manager. Rory Higgins, of course, who was part of Stephen Kenny's backroom team at Dundalk, uh, spoke to Aoife Mullen. Rory Higgins, familiar territory here for you in Oriel Park. It's a tough place to come, but you must be so proud of your players' performance tonight. Uh, extremely proud. Um, we haven't won here since 2013, so it just shows the size of the task. And we went the goal behind, which makes it even more impressive. Um, it's a phenomenal win and, and um, just extremely proud of the players and the staff and everyone associated with the club. And this very professional performance because I suppose Sean Murray's goal was a thunderbolt from outside the box but heads didn't drop and if there's a good time to score it's always before half time mm. and you must be very proud of the professionalism that not just Kieran Harkin with the goal before half time but the entire team showed. Yeah, um, it, it swung momentum probably in our favour at the start of the second half and we capitalised on it and got a good goal. And um, no, Again, it's just that uh, the players have been questions have been asked of them right throughout the season um, and, and they've answered all the questions emphatically and uh, they deserve so, so much credit. They, they accept responsibility when they cross the white line and um, just delighted and, and privileged to be manager of this club. Yeah, and the players you've talked about there and you've rightly praised them, but I suppose from your point of view, now that you're standing here and you can reflect on the season, you must be so proud of yourself and it must be so, so fulfilling to stand here in familiar territory, as I said, but you know, with, with the win now under your belt and such a wonderful run of games since you took over. I, of course I'm delighted. I'm not going to lie, of, of course I'm delighted, but um, I've, I've got so much people um, who are in my corner and who help me on a daily basis and I can't thank them enough, and also obviously the players as well. And, uh, a great chairman, and Philip, Sean Barrett, Dodie McGuinness, Peter Wallace, so many of them. And, and I'm, I'm leaving people out who I shouldn't be leaving out. But um, that's always the danger when you lose people. Uh, isn't it? Of course, but um, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to stand here and list everyone. But everyone associated with the club has been absolutely brilliant to me from the minute I walked in the door. And um, you're right, we have been on a tremendous run, but it's a, it's a group effort. And not only the backroom staff, but the fans that you've brought with them t- with you tonight. It's going to be a very enjoyable trip back home to Derry. Um, we could see them there at the end, and they hung on to see the results in the other game. So now it's out of your hands, and it's all eyes on the FAI Cup final. Aye, that's it. And I, I think they had a good trip on the way down as well, but it looks of like things. So I'm sure they delighted to send them home with three points and a big performance. Um, and it's listen, it's out of our control. We can't. We've done what we've set out to do from probably two months ago this was our target internally uh, um, and we've achieved it so it's a huge congratulations to the players and just finally it's a great way to wrap up the season and 
very exciting, I suppose, looking ahead to 2022. You've some wonderful young players there on the pitch, good mix of youth and experience, but bringing in Patrick McElhenney, Michael Duffy, people here in Oriel Park would be sad to see them go, but you must be so excited for next season. Of course. Um, can't wait already. Um, and two Derry lads, both live five minutes from the brand they were, so uh, they grew up Derry fans and... and we're delighted to have them back. There's 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 good excitement around the club at the minute, which we want. There's ex- expectation now, which we want. And they they uh, they basically compete and 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 they, they try and uh, be at the top end of the table. Um, you need players who have experienced winning trophies, and Patrick and Michael have, have definitely done that. So never mind Derry girls. Be a series of Derry boys <laughs> coming to the screen near you. Well done, Rory Higgins. Thank you very much. This is the ExtraTime.com Monday podcast and that was Rory Higgins speaking to Aoife Mullen following their 2-1 win against Dundalk on Friday night. Since that, they've confirmed the signing of Will Patching. Everyone knew that was happening. It was just a matter of them needing to confirm it and, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's. How are you feeling, by the way, if you're a Derry fan? Is it a case of everything rides on St. Pat's beating Bowes and you reaching Europe next season? Because even though you'll contend in the league and you'll have a great squad, a season without Europe just isn't the same. Or are you happy enough either way? We'd love to hear from you at Extra Time News or at Oshin Langan. Right, let's concentrate on the promotion relegation playoff final, which takes place this Friday in Richmond Park. It is live on LOI TV for those of you who can't make it. We'll hear from Waterford manager Mark Bircham in just a second. They drew nil all with St. Pat's on Friday night. But even if they'd won, they still wouldn't have leapfrogged Finn Harps because Finn Harps got the victory against Longford. So congratulations to Harps for staying up for another season. Um, UCD beat Bray 2-0 on Friday night. Colin Whelan with his 21st league goal of the season and what a goal it was as well. Paul Doyle added a goal as well. He generally doesn't score. He's more of an assist man but uh, got his first of the season in the league on Friday night and it was a nice goal as well. A cleverly taken goal. We'll hear from Andy Myler, the UCD manager, in just a moment. But first, here is one of the goal scorers, Colin Whelan. Oh, I'm buzzing. Um, it was just lovely. It's a great game. Like So, uh it was lovely to come out on top and have a 2-0 win. You had to stay patient, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Um, it was it was right tight game. Like they were they were good. They had a few chances. We had a few chances, and then uh, we just got the break in the game, and uh, it was it was lovely. Talk to me about your goal because it was a stunning strike. Yeah, I think um, I've been fouled for the free kick, and uh, I'm not usually on him, but uh, I just sheer anger. I just put it down, and I said, "I'm having this." Like so, uh, I was just wasn't to see that nestle the back of the net. So. And did it go through the wall, or how did it work? Because I was on commentary, I haven't seen a replay, so even I don't know. I reacted via sound rather than words as well, which is always a sign of a great goal. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's kind of gone in between their heads. So I think they're probably wall probably should have done better, but it, yeah. it's it's gone through it. So happy days. Well, I got a text halfway through the game saying all of Thomastown United is watching. So you'll you'll be pleased with that 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 your old club are all watching. Oh yeah, no, they uh, they follow me. Uh, all, all the time they're always posting on social media and stuff so I'm uh, happy happy for the club Now you set up for you a local derby against Waterford I think you might have spent some time at Waterford as well didn't you? Yeah I was with Waterford for four years um, yeah. from 17 to 19 so uh, it was, uh, it'll be a good game for us now Yeah and I'm sure you'll think about that in the next couple of days but how good is it to get there how good is it to keep the season alive and to have that momentum having beaten Treaty having beaten Bray and now a big occasion to look forward to you know, essentially a cup final yeah, that's exactly it. Um, we like we will have good momentum going into going into it, and uh, Waterford probably won't. So um, it's going to be a very good game, and uh, I will will bring it all to him. And Georgie Pointer was on co commentary with me tonight, and I said after you went one 0 up, I said, "Will they just drop deep now and just protect what they have?" And he said, "No, it's not what UCD do. You must enjoy playing." in that kind of system you have a manager who encourages you to keep the ball down keep playing your football he trusts you to play football which I'm sure you love oh, no, that's exactly it he always, he always praises us for playing football and that's the way he wants us to play and even like when we went 1-0 up it wasn't like if we sat back we knew oh, they'll, they'll get a sloppy one because even last, last year in the playoffs we learned that we kind of stepped back against Longford and they took us with two set pieces so we just stayed going this time and got our 2-0 advantage Andy Myler UCD manager first of all how do you feel after a 2-0 win in the first division playoff final against Bray here in Dalyman Park? Yeah, it's great. Really happy with the performance overall. Um, you know, a, a really good 1-11, good team performance tonight. Um, so, 
these games are for winning and for results. Uh, we got that tonight. We got a performance as well. So overall, really happy, and we move on to next week. I think it's fair to say you were the better team. You used the width of the pitch you got in behind him and you took your goals wonderfully well a stunner from Colm and a beautiful finish from Paul Doyle I think that's his first in the league he's normally the assist king but tonight he, he came up with a good finish Yeah absolutely um, we've been playing uh, Doyle closer to the goal the last couple of weeks and um, great to see him getting a finish tonight uh, something that he's been looking to add to his game goal so like you said he gets a lot of assists um, but overall it, you know it, it's, a, it's a night where you wouldn't really single this player or that player out all the players absolutely fantastic. The stuff we worked on during the week, they were all over it tonight in the pitch. Uh, you know, like I said, we made the pitch big and passed the ball when we needed to, and we were rugged when we needed to as well. At the point where you were one 0 up, you could have just kept it in the corner. You could have gone defensive, but you didn't. Probably against your DNA, and you were rewarded for it. And that's yeah. that's good to see. I think football fans, neutral fans, love to see that, as do UCD fans. Yeah, listen, I I don't think we're the type of team, the type of club, where I have the philosophy to sort of. Defend the, defend the game from the corner, you know, from 15, 20 minutes out. Uh, we want to we want to play. The players want to play. We have to let them play. Um, so, I mean, we kept in the corner for the last 30 seconds or two minutes or whatever else. That's like any other team would. But um, no, I don't think uh, it's, it's not in our DNA. Uh, our, our philosophy is to try and win games and win them well and press teams and, and, and look for more. Um, and that worked tonight. Waterford in the final. I think it's in Richmond Park next weekend. Yeah, um, listen, we, we'll know each other from the, the Cup game a couple of weeks ago uh, where they, they nicked us uh, in the last minute. A really good side. Uh, like that, that's, that's second from last place in the Premier Division has been so hotly contested that you know teams over 40 points, well into 40 points, is unheard of, I think, in the Premier Division. So, uh, you know, teams that are they're in a bit of form. We're in a bit of form. Um, we know each other from a couple of weeks ago. So no doubt it'll be nil all. Is this a kind of a guile versus strength type of game or is that just no, too I, much of a cliche? No, no, I actually think Waterford are a really good football side. They have uh, particularly strong, I think, from um, in their in their attacking players as well. You know, they have some really good uh, attacking players which they showed when they came to UCD a few weeks ago. So um, no, I, I think it'll be, a t- it'll be two teams who like to play football going after it. Um, I think a decent game for the neutral I think what we need to do is concentrate on the performance levels and trust that uh, we can do what we did tonight next week and look you can only answer about year preparations but for your boys is it is it a kind of a happy unpressurised build up kind of like going into a cup final it's a big occasion it's a good occasion yeah, listen, Waterford, Waterford will go in as favourites, no doubt. Premier Division team, playing well, all that kind of stuff. And, and rightly so, they should do. Uh, they're already in the Premier. and um, uh, So that's it. But for, from our point of view, uh, we try and keep it as unpressured as we want. I mean, the pressure we bring is the pressure from our own group. We don't have two, we won't have 2,000 fans at the game next week. Uh, you know, Waterford, all of those kind of things. But we're used to that. Uh, it, I, I think we're always used to trying to generate whatever pressure is necessary within the group. Um, for these uh, type of occasions and we'll do that again so I mean sometimes that works in our way with a young team there's less pressure they can go and play um, yeah. and they seem to support each other as well much as a cliche or corny as that might sound but you can yeah. see it on the pitch tonight you can see it at the end their families all coming up and yeah. congratulating them so it's not what you call a huge crowd but it's enthusiastic it's yeah. an enthusiastic crowd and on the pitch they support each other which is where the support I suppose is most important yeah listen UCD is a unique club and it's an unbelievable club uh, to work at and to play at and I've had the the, the luck and the pleasure of doing both so um, it's a fantastic place to uh, to be involved in football so um, yeah we'll bring we'll try and bring that uniqueness to next Friday um, and see where it takes us I know some people grumble about UCD sometimes having a chance to get into the Premier Division uh, we'll let them grumble about that and we'll just get on with our stuff I don't think they'd grumble if they were here tonight Andy uh, best of luck next week oh, Shane, thanks a million. Andy Myler the UCD manager speaking to me following the 2-0 win against Bray on Friday night so next Friday night um, it's a tradition isn't it it's always the biggest show of the year it's always what people talk about all over the weekend it can literally change lives um, but enough about the relegation promotion playoff final the toy show is also on um, look you can just watch it on plus one obviously the kids will be allowed to stay up for the uh, promotion relegation playoff because I know that's always a big thing in all the households. Let them have sweets, let them have popcorn, let them enjoy it. And if they still have a bit of energy about that, yeah, then by all means, let them watch a few minutes of the toy show. But you know, they can watch that on player anyway, so it's no big deal. That'll be on next year again anyway. So it's all the relegation promotion playoff. Yeah, I see your dilemma as a parent, actually. God, parenting, God, it must be hard. 
Right, let's hear from the Waterford side of things ahead of the promotion relegation playoff final next Friday night. After their scoreless draw with St. Pat's last Friday, Mark Bircham, the Blues manager, spoke to Matt Keane of WLR and outlined the challenges that they have faced for the last couple of weeks and possibly will face again this week and right into Friday. From when I come in on six points after 15 games, it's been a mag- magnificent points total to get 42. And in a lot of seasons, that's been enough to get in Europe, let alone stay in the division. So the lads have yeah, been credit to them. Look, we're still a really good team. We've got 42 points and we're going into a, a playoff game to stay in the division where I really fancy us to, to turn it on and, and do well. It's be against UCD, team that we played in the cup where... We made five, six changes in that game anyway. and So it's one of them when we know who we're playing. And look, as I said, credit to them. It's the end of the season. If, you, if you'd have offered me 42 points when I first come in, I've, I've thought you're mental, absolutely mentalist. But look, we, we've got there. It just wasn't enough at the end because other teams have picked up points. But I think they've done the club proud. They've done me proud. And... So many of them, like you probably don't know, so many of them have been playing with injuries and gritting their teeth, getting through where they're probably 75% fit. And we've used a small squad of players and taken it to the line. And I think the Derry game at home where we let the 93rd minute equaliser and took a, a big, big chunk out of some of the players mentally. And look, we've got one, one game to go. If we can win it and, and stay in the division, there's no better way to do it than the playoff. Mm. They're a good team, UCD, aren't they, Mark? You know, good footballing team. Yeah, really good footballing team, but we're a better footballing team. So there's nothing to fear. We're a better footballing team than a lot of teams in this division. So I think we've had the respect of a lot of teams in this league and we go into that game full of confidence that we can win that game and stay in the league. Again, when I first came here, I got told it was a two-legged playoff. That changed quite rapidly. <laughs> that changed three weeks ago, so who knows where, where we're going to play. It could be a blessing in disguise in one way that the lads who are suspended and injured tonight, they're all going to be available next Friday. Yeah, definitely. And it would have been a massive... T- even if we'd have won at Longford last week to come here and with the bare-bones minimal squad we had to try and beat a team second in the league would have been difficult anyway. So maybe if we'd have won last week and we'd have come here and not won it would have been more of a mental blow to take. So we sort of got our heads round it and look, we're still putting a good show today. We could have, we've taken them to the wild at St. Pat's. It had a couple of chances at the end and we, we can go into next week full of confidence. Finally then, Mark, huge week on the training ground this week. Yeah, huge week. Uh, it, it'd be something to really look forward to, the lads. It will be. Hopefully we can... No, in our luck, COVID will probably strike and it'll be behind closed doors. It'll be behind closed doors. Fans won't be allowed to go there when we're playing in an empty stadium. But fingers crossed we can get a really big travelling support, get these Waterford fans up there, getting them right behind the lads and make it like a home game for us. Mark Bircham, the Waterford manager, looking ahead to Friday night's promotion relegation playoff final against UCD at Richmond Park. It's live on LOI TV. If you can't watch it, you can listen to it on WLR and it's a special night on WLR because it's Matt Keane's last broadcast he's retiring after God knows how many years of stellar service to the station his coverage of League of Ireland specifically Waterford and the local scene in Waterford has been amazing and if every station and every media outlet had a Matt Keane then the League of Ireland would be right up there with the Premier League regards levels of coverage uh, just Amazing and totemic figure. And as well as all that, a very helpful and good fellow. When I started in WLR as a very young person, Matt was very generous with his time, very good to me and always very helpful. And I've never forgotten that. And that helpfulness and generosity continued throughout his career. So Matt, look, the very best of luck in your retirement. And um, the people of Waterford and Waterford FC in its various guises over the years, of course, it used to be Waterford United. uh, They owe you a debt of gratitude. Um, he will be missed from coverage, but I'm sure we'll see him pop up at games and things like that. Matt Keane, what a career you've enjoyed. Right, let's talk about GA. Uh, we'll round up the club stories over the weekend, the best of them anyway. By the way, still to come, Tom O'Connor's roundup of the Irish in the UK and abroad. Let's just uh, skim through them. Not more champions in Mayo once again, beating Bell Mullet by six points. The Nair won in Waterford in the Senior Football Championship final. Uh, one seven to nine points. By all means, not a classic, but Michael Ryan was managing the Nair 
what a career he's had as a manager. Jamie Barron was playing for the Nair, a hurling all-star, but he's also a decent footballer as well. Kim O'Cook Crooks overcoming St. Jude's by 1.17 to 1.6. So that's a senior football and hurling double for the Crooks. Again, not a classic, but, you know, I'm a Crooks person, so who cares? In the Connacht Senior Football Championship, Tour de Strand and Mount Bellew Moylock getting wins. No surprise there. Nave Martin of Louth. Watch out for them in the club championship. People aren't talking about them because maybe Louth hasn't done amazing things in the club championship at senior level. But they could be in the shake-up. Mullinocta, who caused the shock by winning Leinster a couple of years ago, they're already gone, beaten by Blessington, 1-7 to 1-5. A Blessington with a big comeback there. Nace overcoming Tullamore, 2-11 to 3-7. And Ulster, not a classic by the sounds of it. Glenn beating St. Eunan's, 8 points to 1-4. And Tipperary, what an occasion, what a final, what a game this was. Lockmore Castellani, who drew in the Tipperary Senior Hurling Final last week, Beat Clonmel Commercials in the Tipperary Senior Football Final this week. one twelve to one eleven. They were trailing very late in the game. And then, well, there's an old saying that I've just made up about Tipperary and Lockmore. If you're in trouble, give the ball to a McGrath. Tip FM's Stephen Gleeson takes it up from here. That Lockmore, they've turned it over. Brilliant play by Brian McGrath to turn it over. Into Kieran McGrath, into Lee McGrath, into John McGrath. John McGrath has won the county final. A goal by John McGrath. A goal for Lockmore Castellani. Joining me now is county champion Brian McGrath. Brian, we didn't know if you were playing or not playing with your hand and all. You came on today. What's the feeling like now? Ah, oh, it's unbelievable. Um, just uh, the excitement there when the final whistle goes. It's just it's hard to put into words. And the uh, work that this group of players has done over the last two, three years is unreal. Going out week, week in, week out. Just going, giving everything week in, week out. Going to the bottom of your stomach week in, week out. It's unreal. It, it just gives us so much momentum. Gives us some bond there and it's just some feeling when you know you're giving it all and the lad beside you is giving it all just walk off that field then with a win it's just unbelievable an amazing finish an amazing story and Lockmore Castellani not done yet because they could win the Senior Hurling Championship next weekend they're playing in the replay of the final Drum and Inch by the way winning the Camogie Championship in Tipperary and what's amazing about that is, is there's a lot of Lockmore Castellani players on that Drum and Inch team uh, staying with um, Hurling, St. Rhinus overcoming Cool Derry to win a three in a row in the Offaly Senior Hurling Championship. Connor Clancy is the captain, he's the goalkeeper. Afterwards, I was chatting to him, and I noticed that very soon after the full time whistle, he was on the phone. Turns out he was talking to his dad, who's in hospital, couldn't make the game, but um, was watching, was listening. So, the very best of luck to um, Mr. Clancy, and uh, we send our well wishes to him. In Cork, Middleton overcoming Glen Rovers, won, uh, 24 points to 118. Glen Rovers now losing three finals in a row. That's a big blow for a club that size. Middleton under Ger Fitzgerald winning a Cork title again with Conor Lehan driving them on. Conor not in the Cork panel anymore, but obviously he is determined to do it for his club. They're actually coached by Ben O'Connor, who used to play for Newtown Chandram. And last year they didn't get out of the group, if memory serves. But this year they've ended up as champions. So well done and congratulations to them. Sarsfields, by the way, have won the Galway Senior Camogie Championship yet again. They were the last winners of the AIB All-Ireland Club Championship and they look like they could do it again, but they have to finish the 2020 season first because Camogie are finishing their 2020 provincial season, uh, whereas the GA didn't do one of those last year. So you'll see more about that in the coming weeks. That's almost it from us though. Uh, before we go, let's hear from Tom O'Connor of ExtraTime.com who'll tell us how the Irish players did in the UK and abroad over the weekend. Given that on a dis- domestic level, the most important match of the weekend took place at Talla Stadium as Wexford overcame title winner Shelburne. No better place to start than with the Irish women represented in Britain this weekend. So we had a, a mixed bag. You had Marie Hurrahan, Louise Quinn, Lucy Quinn and Harriet Scott, all part of the Birmingham side. We saw that they lost a the manager during the week and have uh, appointed an interim manager. And they lost 5-0 to Chelsea. Chelsea's London rivals, obviously. Um, Arsenal won 2-0 against Man United. Katie McCabe scored a penalty. We had battle of goalkeepers as Megan Walsh, who is declared for the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Her Brighton side, who obviously features Megan Connolly as well, were up against Grace Maloney's Reading. 
and on that occasion Reading won 2 0. So we would imagine that Vera Pau has named two goalkeepers. She's named uh, Courtney Brosnan, obviously the starting number one for Ireland, and the aforementioned Grace Maloney in her squad for the Slovakia game. And it's to be expected maybe that Megan Walsh should be named as the third keeper, but we'll, we'll keep our eyes peeled for that during the week. And then dropping down a division, we had Leanne Kiernan again on the goal trail and Neve Fahey played as Liverpool beat Sunderland 3-1. Going to the men's, we had in the Premier League with Kieran Clark, Shane Duffy and Seamus Coleman all feature. Um, Clark's Newcastle under the stewardship of Eddie Howe for the first time drew 3 all against Brentford. Sh- uh, Shane Duffy's Brighton lost 2-0 to Stephen Gerrard's debut um, his Villa side won 2 0 while Seamus Coleman lost to um, Man City over the weekend. So a tough, tough weekend for Irish defenders in the Premier League. Championship, it was a it was a different story. A lot of goals in the championship for Preston against Cardiff. Um Cardiff won 2 1 and all three goal scorers are Irish. So you have under 21 cap Mark McGuinness and James Collins. Both scored for Cardiff while ex-Cork City striker Seanie Maguire scored a consolation goal for Preston. Um, you had Black Rock Dundalks, Jimmy Dunn, who got an assist for QPR as they beat Luton 2-0. We spoke about Sean McLaughlin uh, playing centre-half for Hull a couple of weeks ago. He started this weekend and Hull won 2-0, so hopefully that could be the start of a, a good run for both himself and for Hull. Then in the the, the, the shock result, I suppose, of the weekend in the championship came as Derby won 3-2 against Bournemouth. Look, Derby had a rough week. They were docked more points again during the week. But from an Irish point of view, Jason Knight started on the right wing and he scored. And behind him at right back, we had uh, Festi Abasele playing. So two Irishmen, obviously up against Mark Travers, who was in goals for Bournemouth. And Gavin Kilkenny, who we've mentioned before, came on as a second half substitute for Bournemouth is their recorded their second defeat of the season, their second place behind behind Fulham. So it was a look shock result, but good from an Irish point of view to see both Jason Knight and Festia Vasile involved. In Scotland we had uh, Livingston drew one all with St Mirren and if you haven't seen Jamie McGrath's strike for St Mirren, it's well worth uh, a view and a serious hit from a long distance out. Though on the flip side for St Mirren it looks like Conor McCarthy could be injured for a period of time and over on his ankle. So remains to be seen. Jim Goodwin, who actually celebrated his 40th birthday uh, during the week, he spoke after the game and said he, you know, that there was a, an element of concern about the injury. So fingers crossed, it's not as bad as it as it looked on Saturday. And in other news, we had. Josh Cullen making his 50th appearance for Anderlecht over the weekend as well. So look, just a short, quick summary. We will have possibly a a longer summary next weekend. Take care. Thank you very much, Tom. That's it from us. We're back on Friday ahead of a busy weekend. It is Cup Final weekend next weekend. And it's kind of Derry's Cup Final as well because they're looking for St. Pat's to beat Bowes and that means that they will reach Europe. There's also a shed load of Gaelic football, ladies football and camogie next weekend. So we'll look ahead to some of the big games and some of the big stories there. Before I go, congratulations, I meant to say, to the Irish rugby team who beat Argentina to complete three in a row. And well done on a great international career, Kira Griffin, who stepped down as the captain and is retiring from international rugby to the win against Japan over the weekend. Kira Griffin was central to it. She'll be a big loss to rugby, but... She'll continue to be a big gain to teaching. She's a a teacher and she's a very active one in a sense that she gets involved with a lot of things that that gets kids active. And she's big into kind of fitness of kids. And as always with teachers, we think of them as educators, but they're pretty much a little bit of everything because they are working with kids at the most formative years. So they have to be kind of nearly nurses and doctors as well as PE teachers and everything else in between. So, um, you know, I think um, when we see Kira Griffin and the work she does, maybe we appreciate it, maybe we see it. Whereas, you know, we don't with other teachers who don't have that platform, but Kira does it for those teachers. And she had, she talks about that as well. She says, look, people know about me because I've got this platform of international rugby, but other teachers don't have that platform. Anyway, I'm kind of rabbiting on a bit, but I think you get the point. We'll talk to you Friday. Have a good week. Take care. Remember, you can um, get your messages to us on at Extra Time News, or you can get me personally on at Oshin Langan.